Today's show is brought to you by Domain.com. Hey guys, this is Giovanni. This is Live Loud Photo. And today we're going to take a walk through a simple version of my workflow. Um, as we get through more videos, uh, we'll get into a little bit more depth and some of the other things that I do when I'm on the road. But today we're going to primarily talk about what happens whenever I am out on a shoot. Um, scenario here would be say I'm at a music festival and uh, say a client is, is a, a beverage company. Um, I don't want to say what beverage company is because I don't want to get in any um, undue promotion that they haven't earned. But um, let's say I'm at a music festival and, and the goal for the day while I'm out there is um, to get shots of people consuming content or consuming content, uh, consuming the beverages, um, feeling good about life. You know, I'm looking for, you know, young, healthy looking people dance and having a good time and kind of portraying the lifestyle that we want to portray, uh, with, with the brand that, that, um, that I'm promoting. So basically what I'm doing, and you saw this in the previous video, I'm walking out there with a, uh, Fuji X 100 T and I've got the Fuji X T one. And uh, the workflow for two for both of these um, is a little bit different depending upon the situation that I'm in. I'm going to show you one workflow today using the XT1 and an iPad, and then I'm going to shoot another uh, video using the X100T and an iPhone. Uh, the differences between the two of those mainly is because um, the iPhone itself will not accept the lightning to SD card reader uh, uh, that the uh, iPad will. So I prefer to use the, the, the reader because it's faster for me to get, to get photos onto the iPad. Um, but when that's not possible, um, either I'm um, in a situation where I don't have the iPad with me, maybe I've got one camera on my phone, that's it. Then I use the Fuji app to transfer wirelessly photos from, from the cameras to the phone. And both cameras accept the Fuji app. So the things we're working with today are going to be the Fuji X-T1. And then I'm going to grab my iPad and uh, have this opened up and ready to go. Um, clear screen, nothing behind the curtains there. And then my other piece is the other critical element is the SD card reader. Again, this is convenience for me because it's faster. If I didn't have the SD card reader, then in both scenarios with the phone and with the iPad app, I would just use the, uh, the Fuji uh, photo receiver app on both of them because they work through Wi-Fi. I like using the phone better um, because I've got obviously direct access through the cell network to post stuff immediately. On the iPad, I have to have the iPhone with me because I've got a tether uh, to the iPhone to get stuff up to the web. So my typical scenario would be if I'm out in the field and I'm shooting, what I would be doing is using the iPhone and doing it wirelessly um, and not having to tether to an iPad. When I get back to the hotel room at the end of the night, I pull everything off of my cards onto the iPad or I push them over to my Western Digital Wi-Fi uh, hard drive, which we'll talk about in another video, how I use that. And then I'll go through those as though they were just a hard drive on a computer and pick the ones I want and take my time to edit them. Domain.com is the place to go to when you get that next great idea. It's one-stop shopping for all of your domain name and web hosting needs. When you buy domain names from Domain.com, you immediately get the power to control what people find when they search for you online. No domain extensions tell your story with the trust of a .com or .net domain name. .com and .net domain extensions inject credibility into your online presence. And who doesn't want to be credible? The guys at Domain.com want to hook you up with a great offer. Save 20% on domain names and web hosting when you use coupon code GEEKBEAT at Domain.com's checkout. Don't forget, it's 20% off when you use the coupon code GEEKBEAT. When you think of domain names, think of domain.com. So let's talk about what we're going to do. So I'm in the field. I'm shooting. I come across you. You are young and fresh, and you're drinking Topo Chico, and I want to get a picture of you. So I stop, and I ask you, hey, is it okay if I take your picture? And they say, why? Well, you're kind of a creeper. And I say, well, because I work for Topo Chico, and I can put you up on my social media accounts. And they say, yeah, that's a great idea. So I... Take a few shots of you drinking the Topo Chico. And uh, my 
now my photos are on the, the card, right? So what I'll do is I will quickly, not necessarily every time I take a picture, but when it's time to, to uh, put stuff up on the internet, I pull the SD card out of the camera. I pop it into the uh, Apple SD card lightning connector reader, and we'll, we'll go to this other camera here and show you what I'm going to do here and what happens. Um, plug that into the bottom of the iPad, and you're going to see the iPad is going to recognize that card, open up the app and say, hey, do you want to import these? Look at you. You look good. Can you see yourself? Look at you. In this situation, I'm going to say import all. Okay, import complete. Do you want to delete or keep? I always want to keep the photos on the card. Now my photos are imported into the iPad. They're all sitting there. And now it's time for me to do whatever editing that I want to on them and then to get them ready to go uh, to, to the internet. So first thing I will do if I decide that the color chrome a filter on the image, and let me go back a little bit. Um, on the camera, my settings on the camera, whenever I shoot, and this is for both of these cameras are, I'm shooting JPEGs and I shoot JPEGs because everything I shoot is going straight to the web. And um, it's just easier to work with JPEG than raw files whenever you're dealing with mobile devices like this. Um, I shoot in a 16 by nine aspect ratio because I just like that. Um, and then I use uh, within the camera itself on Fuji cameras, you have different film emulations that you can mimic different types of classic Fuji films. And whenever I used to shoot on 35 millimeter film with that Canon AE-1 back there, I used the, uh, the classic Chrome uh, film for color and I use Neopan for black and white. So luckily for me, Fuji has been nice enough to replicate the look and the feel of those different types of film within the camera. So whenever I'm shooting color on my digital cameras, I'm emulating the classic Chrome um, on these. So these come out of the camera. Uh, they're, they're inside the iPad. And the first thing I want to do, if I'm in a situation where I want to apply an additional bit of coloration, and usually what I do is I want to mute colors on the photos. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the images. So I'll go and I'll say, hey, there you are. Um, you were drinking at Topo Chico. You're looking good at the music festival. Actually, you're a GoPro camera. Um, let's say that I decide that that image needs to be muted. The, the colors need to be muted a little bit because that's just, you know, the way that I like to, to have my images appear on the web. First thing I'm going to do is going to go into VSCO. I click on the library app. I add this image by clicking the plus button. And look at you there with, with the little red dot on you smiling at me. Open it up here in VSCO. Don't let that fall down. Come on, buddy. We'll go ahead and edit it this way. And the filter that I like to use in VSCO, and actually the only filter that I ever use in VSCO is F2. Typically what I'll do is I will adjust how much of that filter is applied to the image. That's nothing. That's everything. And what that does is that mutes the colors generally and, and, and it reduces some of the contrast. It's, it's a look that I like. Um, we will go back to where that image is and I will save it. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to take that image and I want to export that out to uh, the Photos app again so I can work with it in a couple of different apps. So I'm going to save it to Camera Roll. And at this point I'm done with VSCO. So the next thing I want to do is I want to square this up. Now there's, there's already the, the, the 16 by 9 crop of this image sitting on the iPad at this point in time. And I will use that for Twitter and for Facebook and, and G+. But for Instagram, I want this thing squared up because my sensibilities say that I want the whole image there on, uh, on my post. So I open it up in InstaSquare. There's a, you know, there, there's a bunch of different apps that'll do this for you. I don't do anything in this. All I do is open it up. It's already squared up and I hit save. So I want to check inside the, the photo app to make sure it's squared up. And it's hard to tell here because it's squared up and it's going to fit inside the screen. But I'm going to trust that the app did what it's supposed to do. Uh, we'll find out here in a second. Now, that photo has already been saved. It's already squared up. It's already been completely edited to the extent that I need it to be. I might sometimes take it into something like an app like Over or something else and add some text to the images. But typically, I don't. I'm just putting the text down inside of the caption of the uh of, of the photo itself. So next step would be to go to Instagram. Now, it's super critical for me to work fast 
whenever I'm doing this is for me to already have Instagram signed in to, to the client's account that I'm working with. So in this situation, because we're doing this for Geeks Life, I'm gonna go ahead and just post this onto my Instagram account. I'm gonna go ahead and click on the camera icon here in the bottom to grab my photo. Uh, you have the option of to shoot a video, take a photo, or I want to uh, grab a photo from my library. And we can see here that sure enough, that, that Square Up app squared the images for me. And you can see here in, in Instagram that the, that the app has got the, the white bars on top and bottom so that the uh, 16 by nine still comes through on uh, the app for us. Again, I'm not doing anything in Instagram. Uh, it's very rare that a photo of mine on Instagram will have an Instagram filter on it. I do that beforehand if I'm going to do it. And then I want to write a caption. So um, this is a pretty, and uh, I could tag you, but I don't know what your name is. So I'll go ahead and post that. And you'll see that it posts up now to Instagram under my Live Loud Texas account. So all is fair and good. If you're watching the video and you've got Instagram, it'd be great if you go and leave a comment on that. So that's a quick demo of the entire workflow that I have whenever I'm in the field working for a client using the iPad 4, using the SD card reader and the Fuji X-T1. I will tell you that I skipped a step in this because since I'm shooting this at the studio, I have Wi-Fi connectivity on my iPad. The last thing that I would have done or probably would have done before I even arrived at the event, I would have tethered my iPad 4 to the iPhone and, and uh, had that going the entire day um, so that when I pulled the iPad out and I started working on stuff, it would already be connected and I wouldn't have to take that step. But I just want to mention that either your iPad needs to have, you know, AT&T, Verizon, Sprint, uh, you know, one of those connectors, T-Mobile, uh, sell your networks connected to it. Or if it's a Wi-Fi only, you're going to have to tether the device or find an open Wi-Fi uh, um, uh, to be able to connect to. So that's the workflow. Um, I appreciate you guys watching. Make sure you give me a thumbs up. If you like the video, leave a comment. Questions are great. Uh, next week, I'm going to shoot you guys a video showing you the workflow with the uh, Fuji X100, uh, X100T in an iPhone, wirelessly connected. And uh, it's going to essentially be a similar, almost identical process, but there's a couple of different steps in that. And it goes a lot faster because in that scenario, uh, I'm not pulling out devices and I'm not having to tether and all that kind of stuff. So thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you next week.